Now, um, I want to move on to another um, subject, still on predestination. And that is the predestination of Jesus Christ. Unlike other religious figures, like you or me, we were not predicted to come. Do you understand? But Jesus Christ was predetermined. I believe we were also predetermined, but our importance is far less than Christ. It's not written. But the predetermination that Christ would come to save you and me is there. Amen. And you see, I'm just going through, this is just the background. I'm trying to give you a certain background for you to believe. Because when we finish this part, then I'm now coming to what you are predestined to do. Uh Which is two things, full-time ministry and then to kill yourself. (laughs) so i am sharing with you yeah, you see, because you don't know, we are discovering the will of God. We are discovering the will of God. So we have to discover it quickly. Because one of the things that I'm going to also show you is where man has been planning something, and God has also got another plan, and how the whole thing mixes up. Mercy. So 45 predictions about your savior coming to this world to save you and detailed predictions detailed predictions about him which is very important because it proves you see a cementing the reality and this what i'm preaching is what sometimes even ministers to jews because Jews, I was once sitting by a lady who inspired me to preach one of my favorite camps, which I preached called My First Love. You, 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 you must, I told you to get the Makane. Is it on the Makane? I believe in this Makane. Yeah. Spend time, you listen to it. You become, even if you are depressed, I'm telling you, how many sometimes when I listen to the Makane, the depression goes away? Yeah. It's like radio that is on. Yeah, it's like radio. I'm telling you. Yeah, you just become flowing and happy. Now, uh, what was I saying? There's a lady who inspired me. She's a Jew, a Jewish lady. I was sitting on, on a flight with her from either Australia or somewhere. Or she was coming from Australia. I was coming from the east, far east. So I sat by her for a long time. And she told me that she, was, she, had, she had been to England. To, she had seen her first love. My boyfriend, her former boyfriend said, well, he was my first love. That's how she described him. Hey. It is your first love that you lose your reasoning, powers of reasoning. <laughs> and then you flow in a certain way. But after the first and second have gone, you see another one. You say, well, you love me. Okay. You, we shall see. <laughs> Forty-five predictions. Number one, that Jesus Christ will be born of the seed of a woman. Galatians chapter four, verse four. When the fullness of time was come. 
God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Under the law, Galatians 4.4. 4. That the woman, it is a woman's seed, not a man's seed. Amen. This one brings me to something else, but I don't want to talk about that. Number two. There are so many verses, so I, if, we, if you delay. And I have a lot of little short films I want to show you. How many want to watch films? You like films? Okay. Isaiah. That number two. That he would be born of a virgin. It was predicted that a virgin would give birth. Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Matthew 1 verse 18, the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 1, 18. Amen. Amen. So you see that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. But in the Old Testament, now I, I was, the reason why I was explaining about this lady who um, told me about her first love was that she was a Jew. And then, you know, she was telling me that, you know, sometimes when they explain these things, it makes you want to be converted. Do you get it? And I've, I spoke to another Jewish person. Or was it the other person maybe? Who was also explaining that when, you, when they read Isaiah, because their whole Bible is this Isaiah and so on. That's the real Bible that they use. You see, Torah. They, they, they believe this is the word of God. And they believe like, when the Bible professor that Elijah is coming, he's coming to whatever. In Israel, every year they have a, a celebration of the Passover and they have a table and a chair and a cup that is left free for Elijah, everybody's house. Because Elijah is supposed to come before the Messiah comes. Yeah. So they have this cup and Elijah's place. They are waiting for him. Yeah. So that's why Jesus said, John the Baptist is Elijah, if you can believe it. He is the Messiah. Are you okay? No close eyes if you are in the first row. Second row. Please. We are going 45 predictions. So if you close your eyes on the second one, uh, where, will you, where will you get to? <laughs> Somebody here should predetermine the exit of such things. Amen. So, uh, what do you call it? When they read these things, that Isaiah, the one they believe in, he said that a virgin would give birth. As far back as then. Then they look at it and say, wow, is this the Messiah? So it really confuses them. Number three. They predicted that the, there would be the Messiah would be the Son of God, the Son of God, which Jesus came and said he was. In Psalm two, verse seven, it says, "I will declare the decree: the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my Son. This day I have begotten thee." And in Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, the Bible says that a voice came down from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Remember when Jesus went for his baptism. So it was predicted in Psalm 2 and you can show to your Jewish friends that it was fulfilled in Matthew 3 when a voice came and said, That's my son. But in Psalm 2, he says, The Lord said to me, You are my son. 
So, all through the Old Testament, you see this prediction. Number four, that he would be the seed of Abraham. That means he would descend directly from Abraham. And in Genesis chapter 22, it's, it's very specific. You see, the things are too many to be accidental. That, and there are 45 exact things. That's why, look, any of you here who likes me, I take you as a divine appointment. Okay. Yeah. If I like you, it's a divine appointment. If you are here, it's a divine appointment. It's not a, the things are too many to be by chance. Yeah. Which part is by chance? That he will be, he will descend straight from Abraham. He says, in thy seed, that was talking to Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Genesis 22 verse 18. That's the prophecy that he gave to Abraham. So when you are speaking to the Jewish brother, you tell him that every nation in the world is going to be blessed through Abraham. Not just the 12 million Jews, that Jewish nation that they have today. There are only 12 million. There are only 12 million, that country. But he says, all nations, 7 billion, are going to be blessed by you, Abraham, because you have obeyed my voice. Amen. What do you think? And then in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, which you don't often read, the genealogy, it starts and it traces Jesus Christ from Abraham. It says this book, Matthew chapter 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and verse 2, verse 2, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, verse 3, and Judas begat Phares. And Zara of Tamar and Pharaoh begat and Esrom and begat Aram. Go on. Verse 4. Aram begat Amidadab. Amidadab begat Nason. Next one. Verse 5. Salmon begat Booz of Racha. Booz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed. Jesse. Next one. Jesse begat David the king. David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. You see, you, you, you wouldn't have chosen that woman's child. You'd have said that it's a dirty child. Next one, verse 7. And Solomon begat Reboam. Reboam begat Abia. Abia begat Asa. Go on. Asa begat Josaphat. Josaphat begat Joram. Joram begat Ozias. Next one, 9. Ozias begat Joatham. Joatham begat Achas. Achas begat Ezekias. Next one. Ezekiel begat Manasseh. Manasseh begat Ammon. Ammon begat Josiah. Go on. Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Yes? And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salatia. Salatia begat Zerubbabel. Go on. Zerubbabel begat Abiud. Abiud begat Eliakam. Eliakam Azor. Azor begat Zadok. Zadok begat Achim. Achim begat Eliud. <laughs> Next one, Eliud begat Eliezer, Eliezer begat Matan, Matan begat Jacob. Next, Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is also called Christ. Yeah. It has been traced from Abraham. And it is, it is something that was predicted that the line Abraham through Abraham, wow. everybody in the world will be blessed. So all these, you see like Judas, Judah the child of uh, Jacob. Is it Jacob? Yeah. Jacob, one of Jacob's sons. That's when he went and slept with the, his daughter-in-law and that daughter-in-law gave birth to, it's all in the line there. Fares, and that led to all those because that woman's husband was dead. It was his son's wife. 
And then his son's wife, when she married another, but the husband died. So the people are afraid of the woman that anybody, any man who marries her dies. So nobody wanted to, whatever. So she was lying there as a prostitute. When he came, he slept with her, she became pregnant. This is not the New Testament. Though. This is the Old Testament. So the Jews, when they see that, because you would have thought that Christians have created that pathway. But it's like the pathway passes through these people like that. Through all these complexes which are in the Bible. Why is that particular incident there? All of them coming through. It's fantastic. So I tell you, shake your nearest predetermined person who was supposed to predetermine sit by you in a destinated fashion. Charlie? It's powerful. Number five, it was predetermined that he would be the son of Isaac, which was of the son of Isaac. Amen? Which was of the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Tara, which was the son of Nacor in Luke 3, 34. He was predicted also to come from Isaac. Verse number six, it was predicted that he would be also the son of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, in Numbers 24. Verse 17, it says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall arise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Shem. Numbers 24, verse 17. You see right here that a star, a star was predicted. To come out of Jacob. Wow. Number seven. It was predicted that he would come out of the tribe of Judah. I want you to know that details of your life have been planned by God. Don't get angry with God. Because he has planned your life in great detail. That he would come from the tribe of Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall all the gathering of the people be. Amen. Amen. Now, go to Genesis chapter 49, verse 1, on the screen here. When Jacob wanted to bless his children, you see, he started mentioning the different ones. And then he called his sons, verse 2. He called his sons, verse 2, gather yourself, verse 3. Then he started with the first boy. He said, you, you will not do well. Because, you see, you see, because what? You went to sleep with one of my wives. And his father saw it, but his father didn't, his father saw it. You never hear anything, Bible says, but Jacob knew about it. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says, you shall rise up before the gray-headed and, and honor the aged. Mm -hmm. Then verse 5, go on. Then these two guys, Simeon and Levi, the very powerful guys, Number two and number three. We finish with number one because uh, the one that he blessed who was going to rule was the fifth person. So Simeon and Levi, they are instruments of cruelty because they went and killed the people that they asked to be circumcised because they had slept with their sister and they went and killed all of them. So he also canceled them from the listing. The next one was who? Oh, my soul, no karma because they slew a man. Okay, verse 6, verse 7. Cursed said be their anger. Mercy. Next one. We were just facing them. Aha, uh -huh, okay, then the fourth one is Judah. He whom thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. To thy father, Judah. go down. Next one. Judah is a lion's whelp. He couch as a lion. Go down. Next one. And the scepter. Scepter means that, like now, the leadership. You see, the fourth child. 
So leadership left the first, the head, bypassed the second, bypassed the third, and then came to the fourth child. And then his scepter is a symbol of the king of the leader. So you are going to be the king. So that the kingship and rulership will never go from you, Judah. Even though he had Joseph whom he loved, his all those Benjamin, and they were all there, he was going to bless them later. But when he got here, then he gave him the leadership. You see, so Jesus Christ is predicted to be, the, they will come from Judah, a lion from the tribe of Judah. You see, so Judah had to, so Reuben had to sleep with his mother, and Simeon and Levi had to commit murder so that they will be eliminated. So sometimes when somebody has sinned, you realize that it's, it may even be something related to you. So, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And Shiloh speaks of, um, the, of the Lord, you know, coming of the Lord or whatever. So, this is a powerful prophecy. So, so you see, Jesus Christ called the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you ask yourself, why the tribe of Judah? Uh, all these predetermined things. Okay, then the next one. It was predicted that he would come from a particular family called Jesse. Isaiah. Isaiah predicted this. Isaiah was also a Jew. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1, he said, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall go out of his roots. So it's like, you see Jesse's family. Jesse was the father of um, David. Isn't it? But he, he predicted a, a rod will come out of Jesse's line. You see. Then he goes on in verse 2. Read verse 2. He says, and this person, the spirit, my friend, whoever is there should be fast, otherwise I will change you. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, might, spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Describing the anointing that is on Christ. And then goes on in the next verse, and it says, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. That he's not going to operate by just what he's seeing and hearing. So we're going to operate by more than that. Going to be a man of visions, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, understanding. The next verse is what? All right. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And shall smite the whole earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of the lips. He shall slay the wicked. Are you there? So it's a powerful, and this one is talking about this, the rod that is going to come out of Jesse. Yes, verse 9. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 32, you see, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Buzo, the son of Samuel, which was the son of Nason. He shows in the line, Jesse is right there. Verse 9, uh, number 9. That he will come from the house of David. In Jeremiah chapter 23, and this one of the prophets the Jews themselves love and respect. He says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jeremiah 23, verse number 5. It's also predicted that he will come from David. So if they are predicted that you will come from Jesse, from David, from Abraham, from Isaac, from Jacob. I mean, it's a very complex, it's like a, a, a puzzle. You have to come from here. So how can one person come from all these places? Do you get it? Yeah. And this one, they are not born, no. <laughs> and some of them are born, but they are saying he'll come from David. Jeremiah, David was gone already. He'll come from David. This one said he'll come from Jesse. 
This was a star of this Judah. They, so they predicted and placing all the prophecies in place. So now the person will come and fulfill all these credentials. Wow. Wow. It's not a small credential to have to say that you are the son of God. Are you there? Now, when all the people were baptized in Luke 3, 21, You see, I don't know if I have the right verse here, but it says in Luke 3, 21 to 23, yeah, no one, all the people were baptized, the heaven was open, verse 22, and then, verse 22, and the Holy Ghost descended, thou my beloved son, verse 23, and verse 23 says, and Jesus himself began to be 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, as was supposed, the son of Heli, Amen. All right, but anyway, he was predicted to come from the house of David. Number 10, it was predicted that he would be born in Bethlehem. So he must come from Abraham, he must come from Isaac, he must come from Jacob, he must come from Jesse, he must come from David, and he must be born in Bethlehem. Hey. So you see, your best place is also important. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judah, Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Matthew 2, verse 5 and 6. It's a, it's, a, it's a quotation from, I think, Zechariah. Thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Amen. Thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not thou the least among the princes of Judah, but out of you, shall come a governor. So which person has such credentials? So many things about the person are described. I am saying all these things to show you that there is nothing so accidental about your life. Amen. 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 And you better be careful to find out his will and fit into it fast. Amen. Amen. It was predicted that he would be presented with gifts. Psalm 72 verse 10. The kings of Tashish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Amen. What's verse 9? What does verse 9 say? They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. It's predicting about, I believe, about the Savior. And the verse before, and the verse before, he shall have dominion from sea to sea. And the verse before, in his days shall the righteous flourish, an abundance of peace. And the verse before, he shall come down like rain upon the moon, gas. The verse before, they shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon throughout all generations. So he's talking about him. Then he says, people shall bring gifts to him. Amen. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, so when they were come to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Verse number 12. It was predicted that children would be killed by Herod. If you remember, when Jesus was born, it was associated with the killing of a number of children in Bethlehem and the regions around. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Jeremiah 31, verse 15. Lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel weeping for her children. Refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. It was predicted, number 13, that he pre-existed. His going forth are from everlasting. Micah chapter 5, 
That's the scripture I was talking about. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Amen. It was predicted that he would be somebody who has been there forever. And that's why Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Do you remember Jesus saying that? I've been there before Abraham. But Micah predicted that somebody who was there before Abraham was going to come. And in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, he says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth he that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So, if you come and you say you are the Messiah and you are not from everlasting, and you are not from Abraham, from Isaac, from Jacob, from David, from Jesse, born in Bethlehem, people presenting gifts, all the lot of combinations, you are not the one. So, uh, you see, the details, I think it is beyond our fathomable imagination that such details can exist. And that is why we read in Psalm 139, said that you are wonderfully and marvelously created by God. Fashioned in great detail. I believe that God knew that I'll be here exactly today. My friends are my friends. My pastors are my pastors. My members are my... It is a divine thing. It's true. It's very accurate. Long ago, I stopped worrying about money in this work that I'm doing. Because I, I have come to believe God will give me what I need to do his work. So, it was predicted. Ask your neighbor, are you from everlasting? Please, ask your neighbor, are you from everlasting of old? Have you been around from, of old from everlasting? America was formed in 1777. Just 1777. But we are talking of somebody who has been from everlasting, from of old, not 1777. Number 14, that he will be called Lord. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin. Look, there is a big court case in, uh, actually, it is in my own family. And that case involves an, a relative. You see, there was a, 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 one of the members of the family who had, was very rich many years ago. And in his will, he had children. These are the children, these are the children. Now, when he wrote the will, one of the children was not born. Yes. And I can show you properties that are worth millions of dollars that have been bequeathed to this person who was not born on the day that the will was being written. But he was predicted in the will. Two years before he was born. That there shall be a son born. And his name shall be such and such. And he's also being given all these millions of whatever. Yes. So I was once having an argument with one of them. And I was, tell, I was telling him that, look, the, the age of the wife, the, the wife has already finished giving birth. She was now in her 40s, in the, in the twilight of fertility. Twilight years of fertility. Yes. Now you are predicting 
that this person who is in the twilight zone of fertility <laughs> is going to become pregnant in two years. That you will be alive in two years. And that the child will be born. And it will be a male. It will be a boy. And that this will be his name. And can you understand why some people will say that it's a forgery? Yes. So you will not understand these things in the Bible till you meet somebody who is trying to be like Jesus. <laughs> He's trying to be like Jesus. To say that he, Isaiah 7, bring the verse. Oh, who is there? And, and a virgin. This is a woman in her twilight zone. This one is a virgin. Free? I mean, everything is intact. And she shall conceive. And she will bear a son, not a daughter. Go and ask uh, this lady. Queen, uh, Queen uh, um, this, uh, 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 the wives of uh, Henry VIII. His eight wives. What happened to them? All of them gave birth to girls. Especially one of the famous ones called Anne Boleyn. She tried. She kept getting pregnant and losing all of them. Pregnant, losing them. Pregnant, losing them. Pregnant, losing them. It was her, uh, one of her sister's children or her daughter queen, became the Queen Mary. Who, or she gave, and she, uh, she gave birth to Queen Elizabeth, the first Elizabeth. What was called the Virgin Queen. She saw her mother executed and all these things happened. She decided never to marry. Never marry. Everybody wanted to marry. The Duke of Sweden, the Prince of uh, France, this of that, everybody said no. She just called them and like, do some. Came like that, never married any of them. But she what she saw. It's not easy to have a son. Before you predict that a virgin <laughs> or a woman in the twilight zone will give birth in two years' time. And you have predicted the years. Yeah, and the name. And you will and said, all this money and all these properties and whatever are for you. Have you seen that? You yourself are saying, mm. So it's a very fantastic prophecy. So when Mary got up and said, you know, the angel appeared to me and said that holy thing that shall be conceived of thee is whatever, whatever, whatever. That's why we do the nine lessons and carols. I hope you have been doing it in your churches. You do nine lessons and we have to read these particular verses to remind ourselves of the most fantastic prophecies that we believe. There are 52 fantastic prophecies in the Bible that we all believe. But I cannot share it with you at this camp. 52 of them. Fantastic. Eish. And this is one of the fantastic things. You must be a man of faith. Amen. So, it was predicted. And they gave him a name, Emmanuel. <laughs> Matthew 1, 23. The next one, that he will be a prophet. Deuteronomy verse eight, chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. Deuteronomy 18, 18. There's going to be a prophet. 17, that he will be a priest. Psalm 1, 1, 10. Thou shalt be a priest, a judge, and a king. Number 18, that he will have a special anointing, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Isaiah 11. That a, a man will come with a special anointing. Amen. What do you think? Huh? And, and what was Jesus? Jesus' father's name was not Joseph Christ. Joseph and Mary Christ. No. He was Mary and Joseph. But Jesus' nickname, which is anointing, was Christ. From his movements and maneuvers in the system, he developed a name. You know how some people get a nickname in school? There are some schools 
Infancy Pim School in Ghana. It's a school in Ghana called Infancy Pim. They are special thing that they have in that school. It says nicknames. Everybody is given a nickname when you go to that school. That's the main thing that they do in that school. Give, giving nicknames. Are you there? Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? Jesus had a nickname. Anointing. Christ. Amen. Number 19, that he would be a man of zeal. Psalm 69. For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Zeal. His zeal was that he would beat the people in the temple. So the day that he went to the temple and was lashing the people, that one was also predicted. Number 20, that he would begin his ministry in Galilee. Isaiah chapter 9 tells us about that. Perhaps the most anointed of all the prophets, Isaiah. Never, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When are the first? He lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Afterward did more grievously afflicted by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nation. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them have the light shined. Beyond Jordan in Galilee. So the people that walk, so you see, it was in Galilee. And Galilee is where Jesus did miracles. I don't do miracles everywhere. No one does miracles everywhere. You have miracles at particular places where miracles are held or can be held. It's true. You can't do everything everywhere. I can't teach everywhere. Yes. So, Bible said one day just began to upbraid the cities where his great miracles were done. Chorazin, this, that, those towns, Bethsaida, all around the lake of Galilee. Galilee was a place surrounded with so many little towns and villages. And these towns, Galilee, Capernaum, uh, Chorazin, Bethsaida, all, that is where Jesus did his great miracles. You see? So the Bible says he began to upbraid the cities where the great miracles were done. That's what he means. So it, you can't do it everywhere. And it is Galilee that they saw that great light. Wow. So when you are coming, you say you are the Messiah, you must come from Abraham, you must come from Isaac, you must come from Jacob, you must come from David, from Jesse, you must be from Bethlehem, at the same time you must be from Galilee, you must, you must be giving gifts, a lot, you must also come from Egypt, it's also there. <laughs> so you look at it, you ask yourself, what type of person must you be? That he will be a man of miracles, number 21. Then Isaiah 35, verse 5 and 6, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the years of the death shall be unstopped. And the lame shall leap as a heart. And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. And streams in the desert. Isaiah 35 verse 5 and 6. You see all through the Bible. You suddenly see these glimpses of revelation. When the prophet is speaking. Then suddenly you see something has come up. That he will be a teacher of parables. Psalm 78 verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable and I will act utter the dark sayings of old. Psalm 78. Somebody may ask, how do you know that this particular verse applies to Jesus? When you read the context, sometimes you can't even see that it applies to Jesus. But that is how prophecies are. Most prophecies are known after they have happened. When it, when it has already happened, then you say, oh, this is that. Almost every prophecy that has happened, you know that it's a prophecy after it has happened. Then you realize that, oh, this is that. Because when you look at Jesus, you realize that, ah, oh, he is from Abraham, he is from Isaac, he is from Jacob, he is from David, he is from Jesse. He came from Egypt because his father took him there. He is light from Galilee. He did miracles. He did parables. He was anointed, very anointed, so much so that he became a nickname. He was received stars. He was born in Bethlehem. This is, hey, he seemed to be fitting all the predictions. 
that he would enter the temple. Number 23. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai 2 verse 7. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Number 24. That he will be a light to the Gentiles. Isaiah 60 verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. How many have realized that the whole Gentile world, the nations of the world, from the East Africa, Europe, everywhere, we have all come to the light. But no one used to come to the light. The Gentiles didn't used to come to any light in Jerusalem or any light in Israel. But when Christ came, a light came, and the Gentile nations of the world, all of us, from Malaysia, from Singapore, from India, from Australia, from Africa, China, and we are all coming to that light. That we never used to go to any light of any Israelis. They had their own religion. But there was a prediction that the Gentiles will come to this light that is going to come. So my friends, the predictions are too many. That he will rise from the dead. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Isaiah 26, verse 19. Isaiah 26, go to 18. We have been with child, we have been in pain. Brought forth wind. We have brought forth wind. Mercy. We have not brought any deliverance to the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. The next verse. <laughs> Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing. <laughs> hey. Mercy. And we know that Jesus rose from the dead. Number 26, that he would ascend to heaven. I mean, all these things are in the Bible. Psalm 68 verse 18. Thou hast ascended on high, and thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. I mean, look at that. You've ascended on high, and led captivity captive. It was predicted by Jewish prophets. That there is something about ascending on high. Whether whoever is ascending on high, there is an ascending on high. And, and then what? There is a captivity being led captive. And then there is receiving gifts for men. Is it not a gift to be a pastor? An apostle who can establish churches. A prophet who can see visions. An evangelist. It's a gift. It's just shared gifts so that God could be amongst men. Is it, is it not that? That God might dwell among them. Through the presence of this powerful gift, apostolic, prophetic, pastoral, evangelistic teaching, that is through them that we have the presence of God amongst men. Yeah. Yeah. Even for the rebellious, I'm going to have this blessing. So you see, you see. I mean, this is Jesus, and he's talking about how he ascended into heaven. The whole of Christianity is based on Christ ascending to heaven and giving gifts to men. That's why Paul gave the revelation. He ascended to heaven and gave gifts to men. To some he gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. That God might dwell among them. That God might dwell among them. It's the presence of these people that brings the presence of God among them. We can also send this looking up towards God. Amen. Amen. 27. That he will sit at the right hand of God. Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Hebrews 1, 3. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 1 verse 3. It was predicted in 28. The 28th prediction that he will be betrayed by his friend. Psalm 55. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me. Who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide myself. But it is you. 
a man, my equal, my companion, and my familiar friend. We who had sweet fellowship together walked in the house of God in the throne. Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Well, it looks just like Judas. The name Judas cannot be found on this earth anymore. It was a good name. That one act embodies the act of all forms of treachery. And that name now means treachery. Betrayal. It means betrayal. It means it's an evil name now. My own familiar friend. And Judas embodied everything about betrayal. It was predicted that he would be betrayed for money. And I said unto them, if you think good, Zechariah chapter 11 verse 12. Now the Zachariah ones are coming. Zachariah was very powerful. Zachariah, you never know why some of these names are strong. But Zachariah was very wild in his predictions. He says, and I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. Zachariah 11, 12. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Not 31. Not 40. I mean, do you think when Judas was going to sell Christ, he was trying to fulfill some prophecies? I want to fulfill the prophecy and I'll sell him for exactly 30 pieces of silver. You now think about it and see how you have gone. He asked for 30, we'll give you 30. And that 30 was in the Bible. <laughs> hey, if you had sold him for 40, Christ would have been good. But he came to fulfill something exactly. So sometimes when you are misbehaving, you don't know that you are fulfilling a prophecy zim like this. You are exactly in the Bible. Mercy. Matthew 26 verse 15. And he said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. That the money received from betraying him would be thrown into the temple. That's number 30. Number 30. They predicted, it was predicted in the Bible, the Old Testament, that money that was collected from betraying Christ will be thrown into the temple. Because Judas threw it away to them, if you remember, if you watch the Passion. Zechariah 11 verse 13, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter. A good price that I was priced out of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. And it's fulfilled in Matthew 27 verse 5. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hung himself. It was predicted that the money would be used to purchase a field. You see now, we are coming to the more fantastic parts of the prophet. Because this part, you cannot manipulate it. They are historical. And it's involved death and events involving treachery and how he was buried. All those things that happened. You see that you can't really control it. Things that are out of there. Maybe you'll say, oh, Jesus knew that he would be this, so he went to do it. Jesus realized that oh, the Messiah would be this, so. But when he reaches this point, things were not under his control anymore. He was not guiding Judas. Okay, now Judas, throw it here. Okay, now Judas, do this here. Okay, now high priest, use it to buy this. Okay, do this. No. That the money will be used to purchase a field. Zechariah 11 verse 10. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter. A goodly price that I was priced out of them. And I took 30 pieces of silver and cast it to the potter in the house of the Lord. That it would be used to purchase a field. Amen. And they took counsel with them with the potter's field. And bought with them the potter's field. Matthew 27, verse 7. They bought a potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. So, pastors, a good price. Don't be sad when people take an offering for you and it's very small. It's in Zechariah. He said, I was priced at 30 pieces of silver. That is the value they gave for what I was doing for them. <laughs> One pastor was telling me, he said, hey, when I was transferred from this church and I was going to this church, I've been with them for so many years. He said that the offering that they took for me, he said, look, I just look at these people and I just left. Said, I'm talking about full time. 
not even a lay pastor. A lay pastor, your, your real work is at the place that you work. And a layman is not so really supposed to eat the offering. It's a holy thing. The Bible says, and a layman shall not eat of it. Yeah. And we are talking about somebody whose life, work, everything is to be a Levite and work in a church from Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day. So, but he said, look, a goodly power was pride. The value they placed on me, 30 pieces of silver. If I was to follow the price that people have placed on me, uh, like you, you will leave the ministry. It's true. The next one, number 32, that he would be patient and silent under suffering when he was suffering. Isaiah 53, verse 7. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, isn't it? When lambs are being brought to the slaughter, do they speak? They say, I don't like that. I don't want to have a play. Will it be painful? No, they don't ask whether it's to be painful. They are just cool. And then you cut. So Jesus, most Christians, we suffer like pigs, not like lambs. If you've ever seen a pig that is going to die, you see it screaming. We die like pigs. We don't die like lambs. Yeah. But Jesus died like a lamb. Quietly, he was just dead like that. He died silently like a lamb. And most of us, we die like pigs. Oh, oh! We resist every form of suffering. We reject every kind of struggle, any kind of hardship or difficulty. When God calls us and says, come and give up your life for me. We reject it. We fight with God. Like pigs we are, not like lambs. And the, sometimes, even when you yield yourself, you yield yourself with a lot of complaints and a lot of talking. It's true. The Bible says, like a sheep. And this is the only a farmer who can say this. Somebody who has slaughtered different types of animals and knows how all of them behave when they have to suffer. So I'm just cool it like that. If this is what you want for me, I want it. Yeah, wow, oh, 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 oh. That is why pigs are killed with guns. They shoot them. Yeah, they shoot them. Cannot easily kill a pig. And the body is slippery. So they shoot them in the head. Yeah, they shoot them in the head. But they cannot, cannot easily kill it. It will fight, scream. Oh. And the Bible says that Jesus died like a lamb. They took him to the altar. They took him to the cross. They never said anything to you. You will see. Ah, your father, this, your mother, your children. I curse you. Your this will be that. You will see fire. You, you, you are the one who spat on me. I've seen you. Your children will be like this, this and that. No. <laughs> Just quiet like that. Moving. Coolly. Yeah. It's true. Coolly. That's what it means. When you say he died like a lamb. Holy. Yeah. It's true. Many times when God calls us, even we start to obey, our pig nature begins to rise up. Swine, swine. <laughs> Matthew 27 verse 12 says, And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. I mean, some of you, if you go to the doctor and they are doing something, or the dentist and they are doing something, they better have a soundproof room. <laughs> ah! hey, 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 hey. hey! Injection. <laughs> Number 33. That he would be hated without a cause. He, it was predicted that there will, there will be somebody who will come who will be hated without a cause. 
He said, they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that will destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. John 15 verse 24. The fulfillment. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, then they had not seen. But now they are both seen and hated me, both me and my father. This cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. John 15, 24, 25. That's 34, number 34. That the Jews and the Gentiles would come together against him. Both Jews and Gentiles. It was predicted that Jews and Gentiles would come together against our Savior. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers to take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing. Psalm 2 verse 1 and 2. People gang up against Pilate, the rulers, the leaders of Jerusalem, the political leaders, everybody came together against Christ. Amen. The Bible says, and the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before, they were at enmity between themselves. <laughs> Matthew, Luke 12, 23, verse 12. The kings of the earth and rulers take counsel together. Is it not fantastic? Stand on your feet, everybody. That his hands and his feet, number 35... Stand on your feet and write. That his hands and his feet will be nailed to the cross. That his hands and his feet will be nailed to the cross. We are coming to one of the most amazing psalms. Psalm 22. Verse 16. It says, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Psalm 22. Verse 16. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. They have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. All right? Dogs have compassed me. Mercy. The disciples therefore said unto him, John chapter 20, verse 25, Except I shall see his hands, in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into the side, I will not believe. Amen. Number 36, it was predicted that Jesus Christ would be crucified with thieves. Isaiah 53, verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Verse 12 of Isaiah 53. Because he hath poured out his soul. Is that not so? Unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and he made intercession for the transgressors so it was predicted that he would be crucified now we are coming to the painful parts did you want to change the battery you can we are coming to the painful parts of life do you get it and the crucifying of Christ, that, that he would suffer in a particular way. Do you get it? Are you there? Okay. So, sometimes you are going through some particular 
kinds of difficulties in your life. A particular type of difficulty. And you find out that, right, you find out that you really don't enjoy the type of suffering that you are going through. But look at the case of Jesus. It was predicted. So I would say for myself, some of the difficulties that I've been through that I felt that I shouldn't experience, it is finding out these kind of things that have helped me to embrace them and say, this is the will of God, that God has planned this for me. Yeah. And so I'm going to embrace it. Amen. Amen. So he was crucified with thieves. Number 37, that he would pray for his persecutors. It was predicted that he would pray for them. And there in the same verse 12, Isaiah 53 verse 12, he says, and he made intercession for the transgressors. So while Jesus was suffering on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. That is intercession. When somebody is praying for, Lord, forgive the person. Lord, don't let... That is it. He made intercession for the transgressors. Do you get it? So once again, that was also... This is Isaiah. Over 1,000 years before Jesus came. Hundreds and hundreds of years. They were giving the details. Hallelujah. Amen. That he would be rejected, number 38. Isaiah 53, verse 3. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteem him not. So you see here, rejection. Isn't it? Yes. He was rejected. If I look at my class in the medical school, I was rejected by my class. There are very few people like Dr. Nosh, who was in my class, who accepted me. So that makes him very special. You, you can hardly get anybody who was my mate in school who would, I mean, receive from me. Yeah. So, the people that came are about six years after. After me. Or a number of years. It's true. So, it is, it's a prediction. Jesus also said a prophet is not accepted in his own home. So, you find out that all these things are predicted. He's rejected. So, it was predicted that he would be rejected. Number 39, it was predicted that he would be hated without cause. Amen. Amen. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me without, with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Psalm 109 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 109 is another powerful psalm. Now, it was predicted that they would, that number 40, that they would cast lots for his garments. Loto. Lots. For his garments. And you have that in Psalm 22. It says, They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. You see, this was not written by Christians after Christ came home. This was written by Jews. Their prophets wrote this. So you see, when you have somebody like Jesus Christ who came and went through all this, is that all these things happen. It is this type of fulfillment of scripture that converts Jews from Judaism to Christianity. 
if you have the Old Testament. You don't have to. So when, when Paul and others were sharing from the scriptures the word of God, they, they didn't use the New Testament. It wasn't written. They were using these, the Isaiah, Psalms, and so on. So you actually have to know how to witness with the Old Testament. Sorry. If as a Christian, you should know how to witness with the Old Testament. That's the real scriptures. <laughs> yeah. But we, 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 we have gotten used to flowing with the explanations given by the apostles. Are you there? Then the next one, they predicted, number 41, that they would give him vinegar to drink. Vinegar. Psalm 69, verse 20. It says, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I'm full of heaviness. I looked for Psalm, Psalm 69, verse 20, to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. These are a bit accurate. Too. How many are realizing that the details are a lot? That are falling to just one person. Do you see? So you see that the predictions and the predetermined things in sound. So Zachariah will say this, Isaiah will say this. It's, that, it's so much. So you ask yourself, it looks like very little is being left to chance. In fact, if you really believe the Bible, you will realize that there is nothing that has been left to chance. Nothing at all. Move this way. I want to see. Come this way. Emma, you see, nothing has been left to chance. Not even the smallest detail. Do you get it? Yeah. Because when you look in, in life, sometimes you, you, you ask yourself, so what about if, the, what, okay, what about if this, if you had done this, okay, what about if I had gone, what about if I had come, what about if this, what about if, look at this, too much. They give you vinegar, you'll be skilled with thieves, uh, they will reject you, you will pray for the people on the cross. I mean, what else? The details are too many. To, for, and you see, when you are a prisoner on a cross, you are, not, you are not controlling things. Things are happening to you. And everybody is fulfilling the scripture. Everything he does is fulfilling the scripture. He said, let us divide his clothes. How do you control that? How do you control that you are being crucified with other thieves? How do you control that they give you vinegar? Huh? Is it not fantastic? That he will be hated without a cause. It's too fantastic. That they will pay 30 pieces of silver. It's, it's, it is comforting. Especially if you have had an experience where you keep thinking, what about if I've done this? What about if I've done this? Okay, if I've... What I'm saying, you will not understand it all. But one day, you may understand it. Whatever if I can. Anybody who dies, you see, let's say in some kind of incident, if you have not been there, you will always think, so what about if I had gone earlier? What about if I had come back? What about if I decided to do? What about if this? What about... But ultimately, you have to learn to believe in God, that there is no small detail that has even been left. So it actually makes you a bit relaxed. It's like when you say, "Die, I'll die when I'm, I'm supposed to die." It has been decided in so even the 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 minute that I'm supposed to die. It will make it possible for you to fly on planes, travel anywhere, go anywhere, live anywhere, because you know that. The moment of your death has been calculated. And even the way you die. You, you, even the way you die. <laughs> you are going to die in a particular way. Because I remember when Bishop Saki's wife died. 
I used to have a lot of discussion with Bishop Saki about whether it was good. He, what, what his problem was was that he was too shocked. So I was discussing with him, look, there is another way where you know that the person is going to die for a long time. That one too is a wild thing. So we were discussing, which one is better? But you see, God has determined even the way. And I will tell you that death, eh, the way it is, the shorter the notice you have, the better it may be for your experience of that thing. Because it's not a small thing to have it in your thoughts that you are going to die. So the shorter the moments you have, the easier it may be. But of course, it's a theory. We have to experience it. When we get to heaven, we all discuss, Charlie, how did, so how did you die? <laughs> so how did you die? Ah, you died like this. I also died like this. Ah, so how was it? And then we'll be discussing. But as we are here now, it's all theory. <laughs> but there, there are different ways of dying. The Bible says, let him die the death of the wicked. There is a way a wicked person dies. Yeah. And then the Bible says, let me die the death of a righteous man. There is a way that a righteous man also dies. So, I don't know. But we're going to find out. So they gave him vinegar. Number 42, that he would commit himself to the hands of God. As for me, I shall call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and noon, I will complain and murmur. He will hear my voice. He will redeem my soul in peace from the battle which is against me. For there are many who strive with me. Amen. Are you there? Psalm 55 verse 16. Psalm 31 verse 14. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Number 43, he predicted that his bones would not be broken. 34, that his bones would not be broken. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Psalm 34, verse 19, not one of Jesus' bones was broken. And in John 19, it was fulfilled. It says that when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead and they break not his legs. See, they wanted to leave. They wanted to leave. The soldiers wanted to close. It's like, we've closed. Are you dead or not? Hurry up and die. So when they came to see whether the person was dead, they pierced him on the side and then the blood and the water came. They realized that he was dead. But if you are not dead, you are going to break the legs of the person. Do you understand? <laughs> to cause serious bleeding into the person, it will, he will die. So they are going to break the legs brutally. You see, but Jesus died because he had suffered before. The 40 stripes and the match there and a lot of things. God made him die before. They could come and break his legs. You cannot control that. So as they are going around breaking the legs of others, this one, there was no need to break his legs. But the Bible predicts, the, the Bible, uh, Jesus was predicted that there will be darkness over the land. Amos 8 verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that they say the Lord God that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And I will darken the earth in the clear day. Hmm. That was just, remember, there, there was darkness all over the earth. The middle of the day when Jesus died. That's why we have Good Friday service from 12 to 3. I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And I will darken the earth in the clear day. What does the next verse say? Yeah. Huh. 
And the last one, it was predicted and predicted that he should be buried in a rich man's tomb. Isaiah 53 verse 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth. Amen? Is it not powerful? It's fantastic, isn't it? Very good. So, that ends chapter 2. And that is what I was sharing with you. That um, predestination is real. Amen. Amen.